Hey everyone and welcome back to episode 2 of my Reptiles of the World. So today we are, like the thumbnail and the title says, we're in France looking at their native species of reptiles. Now there's quite a, a, quite a range, I'm going to be honest. Some of them we've had in the previous episode of the UK one just because they are the common European lizards. So they are spread around all across the European countries so they will probably pop up now and again throughout future episodes but we'll still go over information on them anyway uh, but there are a lot more uh, native species of reptiles and snakes in uh, France. So let's start off with our first one which I will put up the picture now which is the European Green Lizard. Now uh, these, uh, these, these lizards in France can uh, quite often uh, measure up to about 40 centimeters in length. They can get quite long and two thirds of the total length is their tail. So you can see here in the picture, just here, that their tail is quite long. And you can see that the tail, the tail starts from just behind the back of the legs and goes all the way down here. Now, as you can see, that is more or less the length, the entire length of the body from nose to tip of tail. Um, they have a large, a large flat head and a rounded nose as you can kind of see just in the picture their nose is slightly rounded and they do have a flat head and they're like all lizards they're hearing uh, organs so their their ears as it were um, are situated at the rear end of the head which are the as you can see here this hole just here Uh, temperature is important for these types of lizards and their usual activity requires it to be about 15 degrees with 25 to 30 degrees being preferred so they only really come out and bask in the sun or in the heat when it heats about 15 degrees um, and they are found in most regions of France except the very north and northeast and are absent from Corsica so as you get further up north of France is where you're going to hit kind of not massively cold areas but areas that aren't suitable for these lizards to thrive in very well. Uh, they like bushy uh, dense habitats so where there's plenty of uh, forestry, bushes, undergrowth, anything like that because that's where they can hide and escape predators very easily. And that they have plenty, also they can have get plenty of sunlight for when they need to bask and heat up. Uh, they usually hibernate from October into about April in old rodent burrows, so old mice, rat, vole burrows in the ground. They use those, and the females can lay six to twenty-five eggs. Um, so quite a uh, quite a, a, a bunch of eggs can be laid at one time by one female and their most of their prey are insects and they do eat butterflies as well but they all will also eat fruits uh, small micro mammals bird eggs and even baby birds in nests um, so and they're quite uh, they're quite uh, what's the word to say? Very um, observant of humans. So quite often they will sit still and watch to see what you are doing. If you get too close, then they will scatter and run off. But quite often they will try to see what you are doing because they're very observant. So the next, uh, the next uh, animal that we have is the oscillated lizard which I will just pull up a picture now so here we have a picture of a oscillated lizard these are the largest lizards in Europe and they average about 40 to 60 centimeters but they can sometimes reach 90 centimeters 
um, in the South Pyrenees. And two thirds of the gank, like the green lizard, is the tail. And their hind legs are thick and strong with long curved pointed claws. And they are found throughout the south of France and the southwest to just north of Bordeaux. And they prefer habitats that are open to the sun, rocky scrub, olive plantations and grassland. And occasionally they can be found in denser vegetation. They tend to stay in fairly small territories and often in pairs when disturbed they will quickly hide in a hole in the ground under tree roots or under a large rock and sometimes when threatened or handled they will bite savagely which although normally, normally harmless can be quite painful. So like most lizards they will they don't they're not venomous or anything like that. And their, di their diet is varied it's mainly large insects, beetles, spiders, occasionally bird eggs, baby birds, small mammals and other lizards and small snakes and fruits and berries will be eaten when available and their hibernation takes place from October until March or April and they go underground just like most lizards and their reproduction doesn't really occur until the late spring or early summer and they're often accompanied by violent fights between males and the females lay uh, 5 to 12 eggs usually being deposited between June and July inside holes in the ground and the incubation period is about three months and it would usually be and it's usually unusual to see the young which are about 10 centimeters when they first hatch before September uh, so the next one that we have over in France is the common wall lizard. So here we have one just here. And they're by far the most common lizard, hence why common wall lizard. Um, and uh, they can be seen in large numbers in French hamlets and villages and they are extremely uh, varied in colour depending on both genetic variability and sexual difference which is quite distinct. Uh, they are rarely more than 20 centimetres in length and have an elongated appearance largely as a result of their thin tail uh, which can be half or more of their total length and males are far more colourful and patterned than females which are often a drab brown which is what you can see here in the picture this is a female and they're present in all regions of France and they prefer open sunny areas with little vegetation uh, old, old stone walls, quarries, roadsides and tracks and they're frequently to be seen as mentioned near to old houses where they can be seen scurrying away when approached uh, they are superb climbers. They can also swim with ease and sometimes can be seen lining warm shallow pools. They do that to regulate body temperature. So as much as lizards need to bask in the sunlight to heat up, sometimes if it gets too hot for them they will find pools of water to re help regulate their body temperature. And like most lizards, how they do that is they open their mouth while they bask as well. Uh, that's to help uh, spread their body temperature and spread the heat throughout their body. Um, however, they do need to be able to climb out of those shallow pools, and they can often be found in dead plastic containers and buckets. And uh, they they tend to be uh, loyal and locally staying within a radius of about twenty five meters and frequently forming what appear to be family groups. Um, they're uh, diet is mainly insects, but they will eat butterflies, damselflies, grasshoppers and large insects, equally attractive when they present themselves. They also eat earthworms, uh, that is usually sometimes the length of their total tail, and they will be consumed whole. Uh, their hibernation period is usually from November until March, April. Um, but this can be interrupted by warmer spells. So if it gets really warm in early March, they may sometimes come out of hibernation early. And their breeding immediately starts after hibernation. So as soon as they come out of hibernation is when the breeding period starts for them. Um, and 
uh, quite often they will be uh, result in combat between males over a female. And the females usually go between two and ten eggs and up to three times in one breeding season. So that a, a one female could lay up to 30 eggs in one season. <laughs> and they usually uh, lay those eggs in soft soil or under rocks. And these hatch after about two months. The eggs are oval and are uh, usually about 10 millimeters and they're very soft when they are first laid. Hence why they put them in soft soil or under very large rocks and they swell up to about 15 millimeters once um, they start incubating and another lizard that we had we had these in the UK one and this was the uh, viviporous lizard so let me just find that picture So we have the male and the female one just here that we used last video. And just like in the UK, they're a very stocky body when they have very short limbs, as you can see. And they have a smallish head with a rounded nose. And the color of, of the black is, green and, is a green, brown, beige, gray, or dark brown with a darker streak or series of spots that run all the way through the length of the body and tail which you can see on the small one here. The spots go all the way down to more or less the tip of the tail. And the black individuals occur with some frequency. Their belly is brightly colored during the breeding season. So that's usually how they will probably attract mates. And their length rarely exceeds 17 centimeters. They are found in most parts of France and Europe although they are currently absent in many parts of the southwest and the Mediterranean coastal band. Uh, they prefer a moist or a wet habitat, so marshland, damp leaves, wood debris, wet ditches, and they also frequently to be found near a source of open water where they enjoy swimming. In spite of this fondness for damp conditions, they sun themselves on tree stumps and similar surfaces. And their hibernation takes place from about October until March, Again, they will often emerge for short spells during warm weather periods. So throughout maybe February, early March, if it gets slightly warm, they will possibly come out, bask a bit, then they will go back into where they were. And they usually can be found in large groups under logs, large rocks or in other cavities. They, a lot of lizards do that, so they, when they're in hibernation, they can kind of all keep themselves, uh, they can help regulate each other's body temperatures by huddling up. A lot of animals, not just lizards, do that as well. And their, their food is varied, so they will usually eat insects, scrubs, worms, and they will also uh, eat beers and wasps without the fear of being stung by them. Um, and then what they usually do when they grab their prey is that they will shake it about and then eat it whole. So the shake, the reason why they usually shake it is it sends the prey into kind of like a shocked state. So it kind of stuns them slightly and then they will eat them. And their reproduction takes place between April and June. And the uh, males will usually attempt to defend a territory and the females will frequently couple with several different males during the course of a day. So some eggs may have one uh, male as their father, some eggs may have another, it just depends on the insemination. And they can uh, usually produce between 3 to 15 eggs. And they usually take about 3 months to be produced and they uh, So yeah, and then uh, next up we have the slow worm, which we had we have over here in the UK. Now there's two types of slow worms in France, and you'll see the next one uh, further into the video. So these like uh, over here in the UK, these lizards uh, through evolution lost their limbs, so they lost their front legs and their hind legs. And they quite often they are very very confused with snakes, just because of the way they move 
and the fact that they don't have legs, but they are in fact a lizard. Um, and they can grow up to the length of 50 centimeters. And uh, the reason why they are considered, uh, no reason why they are lizards and not snakes is snakes don't have eyelids. Snakes have a like a film that goes over their eyes like when they blink. Um, whereas a lizard do have eyelids, just like mo mammals. And their skin is very smooth, uh, smooth and shiny. And they're quite often, sometimes they'll have blue spots on the side of their bodies, and they'll have a very pale belly. And then females will usually have, so that would be the, that's like the males, they usually have like blue spots dotting down. And then females have a black or a dark line which runs the length of the spine and a dark belly. Which I think, looking at this one, this is a female. So you have a black line going from the uh, top of the head all the way down to the tail. So you can see it just going along here. They can be found in all regions of France and Europe. Although they generally prefer moist habitats with surrounding dense vegetation, so ditches, pastures, gardens, leaf hips, where they can st still be seen where conditions are dry if there is sufficient shade. So, And uh, they are rather a defensive creature, tending to be very, remain, very well covered under rocks or leaves. And they are not very good at a very good climber, so they don't have the limbs to be able to scale walls, trees or anything like that. But they do have the ability to flee rapidly when threatened and shed the end of their tail if necessary although this will never grow back properly so it usually grows if it's like a really as a, a, a stump and they usually hunt for food around about the early early hours of the day so around dawn and then later in the day as night approaches at so dusk and they seek out slugs spiders beetles insects and their larva and hibernation usually takes place around October until about March, depending on local conditions. And they usually go into a hole which they create equally one which is or, or one that all already exists, like an old rodent tunnel. And their reproduction takes place during the spring, and they'll shortly come out after hibernation. Violent fights can occur between males over a female, and especially when there are multiple males present. And seriously, serious injuries can be inflicted on each other with their tiny teeth. And their young, which number between 5 and 20, are generally born during the hours of darkness after gestation period of three months. And they're usually about 5 centimetres when they're born. Um, another one which we have over here in the UK that uh, France also have are a sand lizard. Which I will find just now. So here we go. It's the... Uh, Again, the same picture as we used last time. Now these are usually about 20 centimeters long and they have stocky cylindrical bodies uh, with very short legs and short wide heads. Um, the color background of females is a pale gray to a light brown and with a creamy white belly and patterns of brown spots or blotches running along the back and sides. The markings are often filled with a white spot or a dash. Tones of green are normally completely absent in females. Uh, males usually have green backs and sides with a pale green belly. So this one we have here is a female. Um, and the, the area of distribution for these in France is concentrated in a broad band which runs from the borders of, with Germany down through an arc to the Mediterranean coast. And our isolated sightings are sometimes made outside of this zone. And their habitat is usually rich in vegetation, bushes, trees or grasslands. Also to be found in sand dunes, hence the name sand lizards. They love using the sand dunes to lay their eggs into because uh, the uh, sand obviously helps store the heat. Uh, so their reproduction usually takes place in about May and June 
and is accompanied by spectacular fights between males which sometimes result in serious injuries. These combats start by way of a complex ritual and usually finish when one of the participants flees, leaving the victorious male with the female. And the females usually egg about 10 to 15 and they are deposited by the female deep in a hole or a burrow that she makes and they hatch around two to three months later. So um, a, another snake that we have here in, for France is the large Samadromenus. I always struggle pronouncing that. So these are an average length of 19 centimeters. So a lot of these lizards are very small. And then more than half of that is their tail. And females are frequently larger than the males and they can go to about 25 centimeters. And their body is covered in pronounced kneeled scales which give them a rough appearance unlike the smooth appearance of most other lizards in France. And the back of their body is a copper brown with two light bands which run for the length of their body we're on the flanks and the upper band is bordered with a dark line. And then uh, during breeding season the males will have vivid blue spots around their shoulders and only found usually in the Mediter Mediterranean zone of France where they occupy habitats comprising of open green oak woodlands open mixed woodlands with clearings, dense scrub and occasionally coastal dunes and their diet is almost entirely of insects. Uh, these uh, are very nervous and will rapidly flee when anything approaches them, often burying themselves in sound or other sand or other ground debris and their hibernation usually tends to be from November until February in France and reproduction is from March until May and is usually for a female to produce about eight eggs which are then buried in her soft material, so soil, sand, decomposing vegetation which then they hatch about ten weeks later. So next up we have a different type of lizard in France which is the common wall or the Moorish gecko. So uh, let's just find that one. There we go. So these ones are very stocky in appearance and they are about 15 centimeters long and about half of that is their tail like most lizards and exceptionally when they can reach a total length of 19 centimeters. So it ranges from 15 to 19 centimeters in length. And they are mainly a brownish grey and this varies according to environmental conditions and their exposure to light and its intensity. And studies have shown that they can change colour quite rapidly and when exposed to strong sunlight they can be almost black but become very pale in the darkness of night. And the underside where their uh, under like their belly and everything is is a uniform cream or a pale yellow. Um, and their bodies are co covered in conical tubercles or warts uh, and they're usually uh, in about 10 to 14 regular dorsal lateral lines uh, and their eyes are without moving eyelids like snakes uh, with a greyish iris and their vertically shaped pupil is able to expand and become round in the dark like cats uh, this versatile is more is important because although they are mainly crepsicule or nocturnal near humans, they are frequently hunt near light sources. They are more often active during daylight in natural environments and even enjoy full sun. They have enlarged fingers and toes that have twelve undivided subdigit adhesive strips. In addition, their claws are visible only on the third and fourth toes, and these features include large amounts of tiny hairs. Uh, and they they have on their gamari and that enables them to walk upside down on most surfaces so like a lot of geckos They're, the females have a very thinner head uh, than those of the males otherwise sexual dimorphism is not very marked the young are recognized by their clear tail with dark rings 
and they use a wide variety of habitats. This includes rocks, tree trunks, ruins and buildings, and they live side by side with humans and are common in small urban centres, villages and city outskirts, and in large infrastructures such as bridges, bridges and motorway tunnels. I can't speak today for some reason. And their prey is almost compromised of insects and spiders. They are oviparous, so they egg, they produce eggs, and the reproduction occurs in spring and early summer. And when they are rutting, they make vocal sounds to defend their territory. A lot of geckos do make kind of like a, it's kind of like a bark. Uh, is the best probably way to describe that. Um, and during mating, the males hold the females with their mouths by the belly to st stimulate them. It's a very way, weird way to do it. Um, and the females usually go twice a year with one or two eggs each time we're using fissures in walls, rocks or trees. And the incubation time is usually 55 to 98 days. And at hatching the juveniles measure about 4 to 5 centimetres in length. And the hibernation takes place from November until March in sheltered frost free places. So the next one we have is another gecko and it is the Mediterranean house gecko or the Turkish gecko as a, another name. So these are a type of house gecko and they're common to the Mediterranean uh, area of France and they are commonly referred to as the Turk Turkish indi in indicated by its Latin name which is Hemidicus turkicus. I can never pronounce Latin names for lizards because um, I don't know Latin. So I'm sorry if any Latin speakers out there uh, that I fumbled that. Um, and they got rarely large, grow larger than 15 centimeters in length. And they're about 10 to 12 centimeters being more than normal. And they have large lidless eyes with elliptical pupils and purple or tan colored skin with black spots so you can see in this picture here it is kind of like a purpley kind of color uh, they have rows of knobbled kneeled knobbly tentacles or nodules down the back and the tail which you see here and their toes are cord and free of extended pads now their toes can adhere to a wide, a wide range of surfaces which allow them to climb small vertical surfaces with ease and each of their foot pads has almost 5,000 fine stiff hairs called city that allows them to cling to vertical surfaces. In addition their toes are extremely double jointed allowing them to peel off their toes from the tips of their toes inward. This allows them to grip the surface from different angles increasing the surface tension. They're very common in and around houses using rocks, stone walls, trees and scrub to provide for cover when required and a ready source of food which compromises, comprises of small flying and crawling insects. Uh, they're easy to observe at night around light sources of houses that attract moths and insects and individuals will defend their favourite hunting zones and they'll have a distinct voice similar to a bird chirping or a high-pitched squeak which is thought to be a territorial message um, and these are thought to be very crepuscular or nocturnal sexual dimorphism is difficult to identify except when females have eggs which can be clearly seen through their skin and reproduction takes place about from March to July and the female lays around two white hard shells on the ground which measure between 10 and 12 millimetres and there may be several spawnings a year hatchings measure about four centimetres above and the incubation lasts about six weeks so we have another gecko coming up now which is a European leaf toad gecko so I'll just grab the picture for that Here we have a European leaf gecko. Um, these are the smallest geckos that can be found in Europe. 
and they can grow to a maximum length of eight centimeters but six centimeters is the usual body and tail are of equal length and there are plump squat lizard with a flattened body and smooth skin which can change color they're clear at night and dark during the day and their back is covered with small smooth scales of blackish to brownish color and they lack tubercles in fact which distingu distinguishes the bit species from other european geckos and the head is a diamond shape wide and somewhat flattened and their large globular eyes have vertical slit pupils and their limbs are short in retaliation to the length of their body their toes are provided with adhesive strips and the end have two large plates separated by a groove into which the claws retract and these leaf padded feet are better able to grip sub substrate in the presence of dust than those of basilic padded geckos and the retractable claws allow them to climb when the pads are clogged with dust. Their head behaviour is crepsical and nocturnal and they live under the barks of trees, stones in dark damp places and their diet is mainly comprised of crawling or flying insects whose skeletons are visible at the entrance to the cracks where they live. And the sexual maturity of these is reached at about two to three years and breeding takes place in the spring from mid-March to mid-May and when struggles can take place between males or between male and non-consenting females when this happens it can sometimes cause their tails to be broken off which then do regrow. Uh, there are two to three spawnings per female from mid-May to the end of July when eggs are placed in cracks, scree or similar locations and each female lays up to six eggs a year, usually two eggs per location. After an incubation of about eight weeks, the eggs hatch and the young geckos emerge no more than one centimeter long. And in France, these are very present in the isles of the Gulf Marseille, La Côte d'Andal, and the isles of Eastern Harvies, Port Cross and Islets, Levent Island in Corsica it is a common species populating all rocky coastal areas, most all the satellite inlets, nearly 70, and many areas of the interior, including middle mountains. Uh, so that's going to be it for part one of France. There's quite a lot, so I'm splitting it into a couple of parts. So if you liked what you saw here and you want to see what other uh, reptiles France has that are native, uh, you know. Next week will be part two and uh, there'll be a link at the end of this video for that one. There will also be a, a link for the playlist at the end of the video as well so if you want to follow this playlist along then feel free. But if, you, if you're new to the channel as well and you like what you see here on the channel I do a wide range of content hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and ding dong that bell icon so you know when I do a live stream or when I post a new video. That's it from me. Peace out, everyone.